Hi there, welcome back to the Cardiff International Arena, the Hasaroda World Pool Championship 2002. Earl of Pearl Strickland against Jeremy Jones. We can join it in the 13th rack. Strickland leads 7 5. Oh, unlucky. Needs a bit of luck here. In a way, deserves a bit of luck just to help him out a bit. He's had a torrid time of it out there tonight. Yeah, and it's not come. He can smile, though. You won't meet a nicer fellow anywhere on the pool circuit than Jeremy Jones. But this one looks to have come undone. The two on for Strickland My and the goodness. two on for Jeremy Jones. That one would easily have afforded the finish line. And as it is, it's down to Jones now. He's only got his sandals left, I know that, in the room for sure. Oh, that's, that's just a, a hit. That's a frightening and shot. He's going to hit the nine and totally snooker himself on the three. This is without doubt <coughs> the worst match of nine ball pool that these players are ever going to play in their whole career. An amazing time for it to happen. After six days of competitive pool, you would think that the players were in perfect stroke. Look at the hand there, he knew how bad a shot that was. He knew how much of an opportunity he'd given away. Oh, can't believe it. He's only messed it up again. And you know what's even more amazing is I know that Jeremy put out Ignacio Chavez, the winner of that group that he was in earlier. He ended up facing him in the last 64. And I know it was a sound beating. And then he put out Torsten Holman, 9-2 in the last round. I hope these lads aren't watching. I just hope these lads aren't watching this performance. This is a presentation on a plate of a place in the last eight for Earl Strickland. And I told you this afternoon that Barry Hearn, the chairman of Matchroom Sport, is the luckiest gambler in the world, who has put £500 on Earl Strickland at 14 to 1. And I just know he's watching at home already counting the winnings. Earl Strickland could very well go on to win this world championship. And wouldn't it be amazing after a performance like this? We're 63, well, 62, I suppose, of the players that would be looking from the back end could have all beat Strickland on this night, all except Jeremy Jones. Good shot that one from Earl. Five to seven, no problems. The eight very near the side pocket, so you'll want to place the cue ball very carefully in attacking that. Make no mistake, this is a very hurtful performance by Jeremy Jones. Um, there, are, there is much interest in this tournament around the world. Uh, this will be talked about for a number of years to come, I'm sure. Um, we have many writers from billiard magazines over in the country as we speak internet sites reporting on every comp every ball potted and somewhere down the line if jeremy jones were to fail in this match he would have to live with the consequences of a poor result misses then you could probably shake a stick at in this one it's all about survival really isn't it but lest we forget they are human we see them play at such a high level don't we Steve that you know tend to think these pockets are garbage cans and they're tossing peas into them. Every now and then they look like mouse's ear holes again. Yes, well, we can all be backseat drivers, uh, but the two lads in the middle are the ones that have got to put the balls down. This game got off to a nightmare start and the nightmare has continued for both of them. It is amazing how much sometimes of a hole you can dig for yourself. If I cast my mind back, in 1982, it was a long time ago. I was supposed to win the World Championship that year. 
And I lost 10-1 to Tony Knowles. Stephen Hendry lost the match 9-0 once in the UK Championship as world current world champion, I think, at the time. We all have our bad days. It's very unusual, though, that two players have a nightmare at the same time. But such is the entertainment of this game. Stranger things have happened in smaller towns. Can Jeremy regroup, pull himself back together? He's got to feel like he's going to get the chances. Just can get enough of this one ball to knock it down the rail. Great shot on the one there. It was never going to be easy landing on the two. Well, that won't hurt Jeremy Jones. That's an unusual thing to happen. Very rarely do you hit the point of the middle pocket on a pool table and make it down the rail. Happens quite a lot on the snooker table, but that point usually spits the ball out to the middle of the table. Jeremy just went across to perhaps get some talcum powder from Earl Strickland. In this sort of situation, Steve, when you know you're fighting it and it's so evident, no point in hiding it, you've got to start getting mad at yourself. Yeah, you've got to try and change the, the, the flow somehow. You've actually got to uh, stop yourself being embarrassed. You've certainly got to kick yourself out of the mental attitude you've, you've got. Easier said than done, of course. But something as dramatic as a fluke like that could just change things. But you've got to make the most of it. It's no good just getting the fluke and not doing enough with it. And Jeremy's had enough chances in this match to turn things in his favour and calm himself down. He hasn't taken any of them yet. He's now behind by enough that at some stage, possibly, he may start to relax. He's running out of time. Needs to pull back here. He's missed three Browns already. The seven ball has been his nemesis tonight. Fourth time lucky. Well, oh, straight in the middle. What's the problem? And nicely positioned to the eight. So eight six, very much on the cards. Neural Strickland will still have a little to consider in this match. Could all be about survival and the opportunity to play on. That would be the best way to erase the memory of what may even be considered a bad win regardless. The nine down and eight six confirmed. A man fighting not just for his existence in this Hasaroda World Pool Championship, but also for his pride. Jeremy Jones, 8 6 behind, has got to drag himself up by his bootstraps somehow and get some sort of game together. He's got a chance here at the two. Looking at his elbow in line with that. Had you not known he was playing the two, it almost looked like his elbow was lined up on the nine. He really does have a very unorthodox back arm. Not anywhere near in line with where you would think the cue is planning to go. That wasn't an ideal shot because he had a bit of chalk in his hand. He was just lining the shot up. I think what he does is he, he has a very 
wrap round grip with his wrist, so his wrist is sticking out a bit. So a bit like Oliver Altman in a way, who, who has a similar fist of a grip rather than in the fingers, more of a, a wrap around. He's got a problem here, Steve. Four to five. Not going to be easy, and it looks like he may be taking the cue ball off the six in traveling up towards the five. So the pace of this shot, all important. And there's that grip. He's not holding the cue tightly. Um, he's got a, a fairly loose grip. It's just wrapped around a, a little, little bit of a little bit of a ballet there to try and keep that cue ball from freezing on the rail and making an impossible positional shot. He's got enough of an angle to create distance up the table with the cue ball. And that was a more positive strike. Perhaps it's taken Jeremy Jones to completely fall apart before he can rebuild himself again to get close to the finishing line for the other player to start to realize that he can somehow make a charge from behind. So often that is the case in many matches that a player starts to relax when he is, when he is more than two or three racks behind. It would be an amazing win if Jeremy Jones were to get back into this game from here. Be fascinating to hear both players' side of the story. Well, he doesn't look like the same player. Thank you. Jeremy Jones on the verge of rifling off the last two racks in superlative fashion here. The nine down, eight seven now, the score. Well, we can move on to the 17th rack. Strickland took the 16th and leads 9-7. He's not on the one, just when he needs to be on the one to perhaps force home his advantage. Those balls just don't do what he wants them to do. This is the tool to shot that, uh, you know, if you had a very light jump cue, you could probably jump over and pot the one. I don't know if Earl plays with a jump cue, with, a, with a, one of those very small 44 inch cues or whether he plays with a hole. Steve, it wouldn't surprise me to see him try and swerve this. I don't think he's completely snookered by the two. If it's about a half ball swerve, and from our overhead camera, it looks that way. Yes, just he'd have to make sure he's over swerved it. If he just caught it too thick, he would run through into the pocket. Oh! Well, he, he actually hit that very well. He hit that as well as he possibly could. If he was going to play... No, sorry, actually. He hit it completely wrong. I've just come out with a lot of rubbish there. <laughs> he needed to swerve a lot more than that. I do apologise. <coughs> yes, he had to just play that a little softer. <laughs> he needed a little more swerve. Steve, when you said he had to overdo it a before more, underdo yes. it, yeah. Sorry, I was that miles really away was there the for key. a minute. Jeremy Still. Jones in with the opportunity and a nice angle on the two to bring the cue ball down for the three. And no problem balls on the table. Nothing to deal with other than that little man inside. Oh, and this cue ball isn't where he intended. Wow, I, I, I really don't think I've seen so many missed positional errors as well. Looks a bit tight, this green six into the middle, but I'm sure Jeremy Jones wouldn't have played into this position unless he felt it was a certainty. 
as I was saying, the next match on this table is a mouth-watering prospect, in my opinion. Oliver Altman from Germany, the machine, versus the magician, Efren Reyes from the Philippines. A clash of styles. He's missed an easier one than this, <laughs> but not there. At least that brown seven has become a little kinder to Jeremy. And again, no obstacles. Just bump this cue ball off the cushion and back into the middle of the table. Well, slowly clawing him to way back into this match. He did have a three rack de deficit. Now it's back to one and he retains the break. There's nothing special about this performance at all from either player. Ooh. That cue ball's in the pocket. Foul shot, ball in hand. Not the way Jeremy Jones wanted to kick off rack number 18. Nine eight the score line in favor of Strickland. And cue ball in hand. Who's going to win this one? It's very much in the lap of the gods. Earl Strickland has moved it up a gear here. He's just running through this rack as fast as he can. Is it panic? Is it confidence? Is it just that instinct of playing on pure instinct that's making him do this with a view that the best way to get this game over and done with is just to go into automatic pilot? Or overdrive? Whatever happens, the winner of this match will be mightily relieved the loser will somehow have to regroup, if not for next season, for the rest of the season that's ahead when they get back to America. It looks very much like Strickland has just got the advantage in this match. Doesn't want to be straight on this, Steve, and he looks to be perfect. He's made this the most tense part of the match. Looked like light work compared to the garbage that I'm sure he thinks he's played earlier in the match. This is a different Earl Strickland all of a sudden. <laughs> the Pearl slots one in. 1080 wants one more rack. Oh, and it's come up marvelously. When he needed a break, he's got a marvelous break. He knows it. All the balls are in the open. I just had a quick glance as we see Strickland's break and the lay of the land here, and Jeremy Jones was shaking his head. Just a little flick, and he knows that this one will no longer be in the balance. Five goes past the seven into the corner. That makes this clearance a lot easier. Just bring the four off the cushion. Back into the middle of the table, just checking to see if that five goes past the seven, or does it? He's got plenty of angle mm. on this four, Steve. He could basically maneuver that cue ball into whatever area the table suits him. If it's tight, he may be worried about playing the shot. He could play the five into the middle pocket, bring the cue ball straight back up and down the table, across the face of the six and nine. But I'm sure that that, that five ball goes. That's a dangerous way of playing the shot. That really is a dangerous way, and he got it, lucky there. I think he he's got perfect. very lucky. Well, that a lot could have gone wrong there, and now 
perched for victory is Earl Strickland here. Striking the ball with authority now. It's just incredible how it's happened. And, uh, you know, when you're talking about great champions, OK, it's, you know, you've got to say that somewhere down the line, Earl Strickland has decided, even if it was too late, he's decided to take the, the game by the scruff of the neck and just to say, well, OK, it's been bad, but I can still do this, and he's done it. Four marks to Earl Strickland. He's through to the next round. Yes, Earl Strickland, a former winner of this event on two occasions, will play Takahashi.